All right, my friends, I've never done this before. I have 21 stories for you, not three, not five, not seven. We'll go through them very quickly. So Build in Germany reported on U Ukraine's victory plan, which includes a ceasefire. The Ukrainian government is denying that. According to the publication, Zelensky is expected to travel to the U.S. and report his strategy to President Biden and uh, presidential candidates Harris and Trump may also be there as well. The report also claims that the... Uh, uh, proposal includes demand to allow strikes with Western long-range weapons deep into Russia and uh, effective temporary freeze on the situation on the front lines. Uh, the Ukrainians are denying this. Zelensky's denying this. His office is denying that. I don't think there's anything to it. I don't know why Build is reporting that. Okay, second, our job is to put Ukraine in a strong position on the battlefield so that they are in a strong position at the negotiating table. They're not really doing that. They might be able to do that with this. The U.S. is preparing significant military aid package for Ukraine, which could be announced by the end of September, according to Jake Sullivan. Well, Biden's going to run out of, what, like six or seven billion dollars worth of aid if they don't spend it between now and September 30th. So that's discretionary aid from the president. And uh, we'll see what all comes of that. Sunday Times, the U.S. won't authorize long-range strikes on Russia until Zelensky presents this victory plan. So that's related to the build story. But this, during a recent visit to Washington by the British Prime Minister to discuss the issue, Biden and his team made it clear that they wanted to go into, quote, standby mode, unquote, until Zelensky presented a plan before giving the go-ahead for strikes deep into Russia. That doesn't sound good to me. The head of the of Russia's main intelligence directorate, Budanov, stated that Russia aims to end the war against Ukraine by the end of 2025 or early 2026 with a victory. Starting from mid-2025, Russia will face serious economic problems and a need for additional motive, uh, mobilization. Russia absolutely does not want to mobilize. That, that was a train wreck when they tried to do that before. They're trying to get uh, scrounge up men from wherever they can by promising the, the people in the poorest area extra financial benefits if they will mobilize. I don't think they want to do it. But watch the economic situation because the economic situation, in my estimation, if Russia loses, and I think there's a high chance that that's possible, if Russia loses, it will be because something happened economically or politically, not because of a major battlefield success. The Ukrainians just have to hold on a battlefield until that kind of collapse. Okay, Lithuania urges NATO to shoot down Russian drones violating their airspace. I don't understand why NATO is not doing this. This is a clear violation on Russia's part into NATO airspace, and they're not even doing that. Now, to say if your drone goes into NATO airspace, we will do X – uh, in return would be a legitimate kind of thing to do, but they're not even dealing with the actual problem itself, let alone doing X in return. This is uh, the foreign minister from Lithuania, Lance Burgess, saying the people who need protection are not getting enough. The people that they need protection from are getting plenty. It's time to switch that around. I agree 100%. Zelensky said uh, Ukraine is expected to build 14 military brigade with uh, the expense of foreign aid. But today, we have not equipped even four. So foreign aid that was supposed to arrive would have equipped 14 brigades. Haven't done four. The aid's just not flowing in like it needs to be. Victory in a modern war depends not only, this is the uh, chair of the NATO military committee, Admiral Rob Bauer. Victory in war depends not only on actions on the battlefield, but also the state of the economy. So NATO allies should support Ukraine simultaneously bolster their own defense system. That is, give Ukraine the aid it needs and backfill with new modernized weapons. Ukraine now produces its own 155 millimeter artillery shells, um, and that's going to be very important. It, they just need to make sure it's not struck. I mean, if Russia can hit it with uh, rockets, that's a bad thing. I don't know where it's being produced. I wouldn't tell you if I didn't know where it's produced. Hopefully it's underground, protected, something along those lines. They need to produce these and they need to produce these in mass. They could, if they if they had all the artillery that they wanted, they could spend a hundred thousand a month. 
New Ukrainian FPV drone reaches 325 kilometers per hour. That's incredible. And it's incredible because Shahid's maximum travel at 185 kilometers an hour. That is uh, about half that rate, 115 miles per hour, uh, as opposed to 185 kilometers, if you're in, uh, American trying to understand what that means. Um, and generally, they're going at 60 to 80, something along those lines, from what I understand, of miles per hour, as opposed to 115, which is maximum capacity. By the way, I was talking to Greg Terry about this kind of thing. As I was talking to him, a drone went over his head, like just zipped over his head. It was a little nerve wracking. Bloomberg, US, UK worried that Russia reveals nuclear secrets to Iran. Western officials express growing concern over Russia's allegedly sharing nuclear secrets with Iran. And why wouldn't they? Because they're chummy. They're another authoritarian state. They could be very useful to Russia to give the West a real headache by having to worry about their nuclear weapons. Okay. Another story, when someone tells you that sanctions can't and won't work, that's basically pro-Russian propaganda. Are we seriously to believe that nothing can be done to stop the shameful flood of transshipments to Russia and Central Asia? This is just about lack of political will. Now, when you look at these pictures, what you're seeing here is Germany to Kurz Kyrgyzstan, okay, or Poland or Italy or Australia going to these Central Asian countries. Look at the exports as of 2022 going to this country from Germany, from Poland, from Italy, from Austria. Nope, they're just making money by uh, shipping things that they can't ship to Russia to a middleman who's going to ship it to Russia. Shame on us. Okay, Russia's war in Ukraine is now costing 300 million, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a sore throat. 300 million per day, up from up 36 from one years ago. What does that mean? It means 109 billion a year. That's what it's costing Russia to keep this terrible war going. Russia's illegal, unprovoked invasion of Ukraine has destabilized food prices, but Ukraine has fought back and food prices have steadied. So in the Black Sea, for example, and this is according to the British Ministry of Defense, in the Black Sea, you remember they, they uh, were uh, threatening or attacking ships that were going to uh, bring wheat. 92% of Ukrainian wheat, for example, goes to Asia and Africa. And so when Russia was attacking that, that was destabilized, destabilizing food prices. But 2023, Russia broke the agreement. Ukraine started firing at Russian ships. And when they fired at Russian ships, guess what? Russian ships had to back off. And now the food can be transported and they've restabilized it by fighting back. Okay, here's Jay and Kiev. Don't underestimate how insane this is. The pro-Russian oligarch and de facto ruler of Georgia now agrees with Russia that it was Georgia that had started the war with Russia in 2008. He says Georgia should apologize for starting a war with Russia in 2008 and promises a Nuremberg trial of some sort. What? Okay, that's, that's just crazy. Now, this is also interesting. Ending the war in Ukraine requires both strength and wisdom according to real Donald Trump. Well, why is he saying that? Well, he pals around with Boris Johnson and whatever you think of Boris Johnson, Boris Johnson's a real friend of Ukraine. Trump recorded his statement at the request of former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson while on a plane en route to a campaign rally in Arizona. Quote, I know President Putin very well. I know President Zelensky very well. And I think this is settling the war needs to be done and we have to do it and we have to do it with both strength and wit wisdom, he said in his address. Now, that's not a full-throated endorsement by any stretch of the imagination, but to whatever degree Boris can move him the right direction or anyone uh, can move him the right direction, that's a positive thing. Not advocating that you vote for him, I am saying that moving him toward a more pro-Ukraine pro stance is a healthy thing. I couldn't understand why this happened. This is RT, and they're talking about this. Let's be honest. Harris wiped the floor with Trump. The Democrat Party candidate played the ex-president's own game and won. Now, RT, you would think, would be kind of more in Trump's corner, and so why they're being honest when they're generally not often doing something like that, I don't understand. CNN and Fox and uh, MSNBC all agreed that um, Harris had a really good night at the debate the other night, even though Trump's arguing the opposite. This is Roger Waters of Pink Floyd, and he's still repeating Russian talking points. I'll let you hear him. Vis-a-vis -vis 
Ukraine and the long range missile conversations that you're having, Lincoln, Sullivan, Biden, Harris, Trump, the whole effing lot of you. Niet means niet. Okay, you will kill us all if you continue down this insane path of incitement towards nuclear war, which is what you are doing. Stop now, today, Biden. Blinking. Okay, so he's saying that by allowing this, you're inciting nuclear war. That's that's nonsense. You're allowing Ukraine to actually strike back. Rod Stewart, on the other hand, urges continued U.S. support for Ukraine during a Cleveland concert calling Russian invasion evil. Wearing Ukraine's colors, he dedicated his iconic hit sailing to the country and its soldiers, adding, quote, whoever is next in the White House, don't stop helping Ukraine. Okay, well, there you are. Um, now, I know that about two thirds of you have a pet. Uh, I did this little survey just asking, just out of curiosity, how many of you have a dog or a cat or other or no pets? And uh, about two out of three of you had uh, a dog or a cat. So I thought you might find this interesting. Rescuers save a dog and his owner from the 12th floor of this building targeted by the Russian forces earlier today. This was in Kharkiv. And you can see a little bit of the dog getting rescued and being carried up. Right. There's a significant cost to what's happening there in Kharkiv. And it's not just humans, it's dogs as well. But back to humans, more than 5.7 billion people live under tyranny. 5.7 billion on Earth. Today, International Day of Democracy, support our struggle and democracy where it's most at risk and challenging authoritarianism. What happens in Ukraine will send a ripple effect of support for democracy or support for authoritarianism. That's what the stakes are in Ukraine. And by the way, that's 5 billion out of 8 billion in population on Earth. And finally, Darth Putin, the parody site, explained the attack on the residential building in Kharkiv today. Members of the Illuminati escorted an injured NATO general from a command center in Kharkiv. Well, let's see the photographic evidence. Yeah. You see what's ha actually happening. This is a great example of what Russian propaganda actually does as opposed to the reality on the ground. All right. Thank you for your time, my friends. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.